Hi, my name is Takumi Kobayashi. I'm working at National Institute of AST in Japan. This video presents my work of Spatial Temporal Fit Analysis Improves 3D CNN for Action Classification. This is a joint work with Dr. Jai Sin Ye. For action classification, 3D CNN is a key technique to produce high performance. It's a natural extension from standard 2D CNN which is widely applied to image classification. The 3D CNN uses spatial temporal 3D conversion feature to encode spatial appearance and temporal dynamics at the same time. In other words, the spatial temporal features characterize 3D CNN. To analyze how the 3D CNN works on video frames, we need to analyze the mechanism of feature extraction by the conversion filters, especially from the viewpoint of temporal dynamics for the action classification. For that purpose, previous works mainly focus on the qualitative analysis by means of visual inspection, such as by visualizing input patterns associated with the filter and generating plausible video frames based on the filter response. However, in this literature, there lacks in-depth analysis for the spatial temporal features themselves. In this work, we analyze spatial temporal feature, especially through the lens of temporal dynamics. It classifies the interesting mechanism of temporal features across deep layers in 3D CNN. Then, based on the analysis, we propose an effective representation for temporal features to facilitate learning of 3D CNN. In addition, to improve feature representation by enhancing robustness against temporal perturbation, we present temporal enhanced data augmentation techniques which work across data augmentation in temporal domain during training. We first analyze the spatial temporal features. This is conducted by four steps. First, 3D CNN is pre-trained on action classification datasets. In this study, we apply I3D ResNet to something something and kinetics datasets. Then we sample spatial temporal features from the pre-trained models. There are plenty of features because a filter exists at every pair of input and output channels. At the third step, each filter is decomposed by singular value decomposition into spatial and temporal features. In this work, we focus on temporal features to encode temporal dynamics of actions. So we pick up so decomposed temporal features only. The I3D ResNet contains conversion filter of which time frame length is 3. It's producing 3-dimensional temporal features. Finally, the 3D temporal filter vector is embedded on the unit sphere. Please note that on the sphere, there are physically distinctive filters. For example, there is a simple center filter that activates only the center frame. And we can also find average filters as well as derivative filters of up to second order. For better visualization, we show the distribution of temporal filters projected on this frame. This slide shows the distribution of temporal filters sampled at each convolution block, which is connected to depths in the model. The upper one is the result of I3D ResNet pre-trained on something something, and the bottom one is on Kinetex dataset. We can find some interesting characteristics of this distribution at shallow and deep layers. First, at the shallower layer, the distribution is rather concentrated around the center filter, which means degradation of three dimensional temporal filter into only one dimensional filter, which indicates no temporal feature extraction. So we can guess that the shallower layers extract appearance features rather than temporal dynamics. Next, we can see that temporal features are diversely distributed at the deeper layers. It means that 
the deeper layers encode various types of temporal dynamics by integrating their appearance and features extracted by the shallow layers. On the other hand, we can also find that the distribution on Kinetex dataset exhibit different patterns from the something something one. In the Kinetex dataset, the distribution is biased toward averaging feature, which is just averaging frame features without paying any attention to temporal dynamics. It is related to the so-called static bias, which is pointed out in the previous works. This feature analysis reveals the dataset bias from a statistical viewpoint based on distribution of temporal features. In summary, we have three findings. First, the shallower layers focus on center feature to extract appearance features. Second, the deeper layers exhibit diverse temporal features to enlarge receptive temporal fields of the feature to encode various temporal dynamics. Third, the kinetics deficit is highly biased to average filters due to so-called static bias. The former two findings show progressive mechanism of temporal filters. We further validate the mechanism through empirical performance analysis. We measure the classification accuracy on something something dataset. While the original model applies spatial temporal filters of three frame temporal lengths, we change the lengths at each layer. Based on the analysis, we can set only one frame filters at the first and second convolution block. It even improves performance. Then, by progressively enlarging the temporal lengths up to five frames, we attain good performance while reducing the computation cost compared to the original model. This quantitative analysis supports our findings. The enlarged temporal features increase the number of parameters, which may impede training. Toward effective training, we apply multi-branch representation to the larger temporal features so that the gradient information is effectively backpropagated through the multiple path. Note that these branches are linearly merged into a single feature to keep the computation cost. We also apply simple data augmentation to enhance temporal robustness. There are two types of temporal dynamics derived from the target and the camera which capture the target actions. For these two dynamics, we can consider data augmentation techniques respectively. One is random sampling rate to mimic various target action speed. The other is a random egg motion to simulate egg motion of camera. By applying these two types of data augmentation to training 3D CNN, the model can allow robust feature representation against these perturbations. Finally, we report performance comparison on something something and kinetics datasets by embedding the proposed method to various backbone 3D CNNs. These results show that the method effectively improves performance in terms both of classification accuracy and computation cost. Thank you.